can you share my screen? It was waiting. Uh, there we go. The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us for this uh, Youth Car Week Online Community Exhibitor webinar. I'm glad you could make it. I hope I think we have a lot of great information for you today. Uh, my name is Katie Nolan. Um, I'm joined by Mary Lou McQuilkin and hey, more <laughs> and more Bravian. Hello. And uh, we are we are all part of the conferences team here with uh, various different roles, but we're all going to be walking you through some of the opportunities uh, that you have through our online community and mobile app this year. Before we get started, I want to go over just a few housekeeping items for the webinar. Uh, make sure you've dialed in using either the phone number that you got in your email or you're able to listen via your, your computer speakers. We've got you in listen-only mode. Um, you can at any time uh, submit questions to us through the questions box on the GoToWebinar panel and um, we will keep an eye on that so that we can make sure um, we're answering your questions as we go. And we'll also double check at the end to make sure we haven't missed anything as we walk you through things. Uh, if you have any technical difficulties, uh, you can click on the hand icon on the control panel and uh, it'll let us know that you're having having some tr trouble and we will uh, try to help you out. And uh, finally, we are recording today's webinar and we will be sharing it with all of our exhibitors so that you can all uh, review it, you can share with other folks at your company, and uh, make sure you uh, get all of the information that you need that way. So like I said, I'm Katie Noland, and I'm the one who has, to a certain extent, headed up the, uh, the online community and mobile app piece that we've added to the conferences this year. And um, I hope you're all at least vaguely aware of the online community and um, the fact that we have a mobile app, I think that as exhibitors, you guys are going to get a lot of great, uh, great functionality out of the community and the app. And we just want to kind of walk you through uh, so that you can get the most out of your expo experience. So um, the very first, the very first thing that I want to show you is just this is an example of an email that either you have received, if you are already a, uh, an attendee for the conferences, this is our invitation email to join the community. Uh, if you haven't received that, if you haven't joined the community, I'll give you my contact information at the end and you can just let me know. We can figure things out for you. But the very first thing that you want to do is you want to set up your personal profile. This email will take you to your personal profile if you are actually attending the conference. And um, even though you're an exhibitor, you are an attendee. And it's very important with Passable that you set up your personal profile. It's also important for you to set up the exhibitor profile. And we'll walk through that as well. But um, Passable is very much set up like, um, like LinkedIn, let's say. Maybe you have a page for a uh, a business, but a lot of the interaction is done one-to-one, person-to-person. -to -person. So you and all of the staff members from your organization that are going to be on site need to have your personal profiles set up because you're going to be the brand ambassadors for your community or for your, um, for your company. And uh, the individuals are the ones who can send messages, request meetings, uh, start discussions, and um, the exhibitor profile can't do that. So I'm going to walk you through. It's pretty straightforward. You know your name, your email address, organization, title. You can add a photo, and you can do a, a brief bio. You want to add a phone number here. And uh, this is my cell phone number. And the reason I've used my cell phone number um, is that uh, it, I want to be able to receive text messages from the community. It's, it's something you can turn off. You don't have to receive text messages, but if you do want us to be able to communicate with you that way, um, you do need to provide a, a, a mobile phone number. 
and we will use that on site for you know reminders of sessions, things that are going on, special events, etc. As it says there, your phone number is not displayed publicly. That go the same goes for your email address. We don't display any of that information um, within Passable, so you're not giving that out to the full attendee group by providing it there. Hey, I'm going to interrupt you real fast and um, just mention that. Each of you, uh, for folks that are registered for multiple conferences, uh, what you're seeing in the email that Katie showed you is the one specific for the CPO forum. If you're registered also for subprime, RE3, and NRC, you will receive individual invitations uh, to join the community for each community. However, um, because all of them, all of the Youth Car Week conferences, CPO, subprime, RE3, and NRC are all on the same platform, each conference recognizes if you're registered for another. So if you're registered for CPO and you're registered for NRC, you're actually only going to have to set up your profile one time. You don't have to go to each individual page and set up multiple profiles. So um, you might want to also keep that in mind when setting up your personal page for your messaging in the event that, you know, on your CPO page you want to talk to dealers, but on your subprime page you want to talk more to the finance folks. Um, so they, they can't actually be individualized for each conference. So if you are registering for, or if you are registered for multiple conferences, uh, make sure that your, you know, your verbiage on your page is, is appropriate across all different avenues. Right, absolutely, and you know that way you don't have to upload your photo four times, you don't have to change your bio four times, but uh, you do need to make it relevant for as many events as you are attending. And one of the once once you fill out sort of the basics, one of the things that uh, you may want to this is kind of where you may want to keep that in mind, especially these are this is the details tab, and you have a few ways of tagging your profile. One of those is your role and interest in the auto industry. If you click here, it'll give you some suggestions. You're able to type anything that you want um, as far as something that you may want. Like if someone is looking for you, a finance executive, or wants to talk to a dealer or a lender or whatever, um, they're able to search through our attendee list and find you uh, if you are tagged that way. So tag, you know, add as many tags as you want to your profile, um, and it'll just help people find you. Um, the, these two pieces here, the age range and years in the industry, you see the little lock mark next to them and it says not display. Those are just for our personal, well, our business information, <laughs> not me personally. I mean, I do want to know everyone, I do want to know everyone's <laughs> age and I'm keeping track. But um, I, uh, th those are just demographic information for us as conference organizers to see who's attending the conference. Um, but we're not sharing those with anyone else, so you can be honest. Um, reasons for attending, uh, this is another one that will show up on your profile. So if, if I want to locate people who are interested in networking or educational opportunities or they're new to the industry or see all the speech, whatever I want to do, I can search through tags that way. So just be sure you can put any sort of tag that you want on there. Um, it can be very specific, but note that people are not probably searching for very, very specific things. Um, and then how did you hear about the conference? We just want to know how our marketing is working. Um, and if everyone or if no one is finding out through our emails, then uh, maybe we uh, maybe we pull back on those a little bit. So that's just for, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Um, <laughs> that's, that's just, that's just uh, again, that sort of demographic background information for us. Links you can add, and I've added there a few different links. One of them is the Used Car Week link um, to our main uh, website. The CPO form link you see there is actually a link to the auto remarketing profile that I've sort of set up as a, as a dummy for this presentation. And then you can also add Twitter links. So you can add your personal Twitter account or you can add your business Twitter however you want, um, however you want to use that. And then that will show your, I'll show you in just a minute, it'll show you your most recent tweets within your profile. So once you've done those, as I mentioned, you have control over um, how we contact you. 
So you can be invisible in the directory if you want to. Um, as exhibitors, I would strongly discourage you from doing that because the whole point is networking and making connections, obviously. So you want other people to be able to find you. Um, you can allow or disallow various types of email, text messaging, and push notifications. And then at the very bottom, you can assign an assistant. If you are attending, but you want someone else to manage your profile and manage your calendar and respond to uh, messages for you, you can name someone else as your assistant. So those are the basics of uh, setting up your profile. I do want to show you what my profile looks like as a completed piece. Um, you see all of our Twitter conversations that we've had here in the office, and <laughs> <laughs> um, that's okay. And uh, you see the tags, like I mentioned, the various tags that you choose are going to show up on your profile there. Your photo, um, I'm tagged as an exhibitor and a staff member. I can share my profile, which is another great way to drive people um, to your profile and to your, um, ultimately, to your exhibitor page. If I want to share it on Twitter, it's going to just pull up Twitter and um, it'll say, you can obviously change it to whatever you want, but it'll offer a link directly to your profile, LinkedIn, Facebook, et cetera. Um, once you've set up your profile, uh, one of the really cool things that Pathable, which is this mobile community, offers is uh, the ability to find who you know. So if you go back to the home page, there's a little button there that says find who you know. <laughs> As you might guess. And I've already sort of gone through, but normally it'll have buttons that say, you know, connect to Facebook, connect to LinkedIn, connect to Twitter, uh, connect to something else maybe, and um, Google Plus yeah. perhaps. And so then it will It'll, it'll go through your contacts on those various social media platforms and it'll add them here if they are attending the conference. So you can connect, you can add them as a contact, you can send them a message, you can see their profile, you can request a meeting with them directly. Um, so that's just sort of a quick way of finding people you may want to communicate with on site at the conference or connect with on site at the conference. Um, so that's sort of it for your profile. You've got some contacts, you've got your profile set up, you are in the system. And then next, once you have that profile, you are able to do a lot of different things. You can go to the Discussions tab. You can create a discussion with everybody who's a registered attendee. You can narrow it down to only people who have the remarketer tag will see that or only people who have a marketing tab or a bank ta tag, <laughs> I don't know, whatever. Um, you can send, you can start a, dis well, I guess it would be a message. You can start a discussion with an individual person too, I believe. Mm -hmm. Let's see, Mary Lou. Well, discussions and messages are really the same. Right, and I, in the same place. Okay, so this is visible to all members of the community if you send it to everybody. It's a public message, essentially. And it's, when you send that, it's going to show up here on the, well, it'll show up on the, does it show up? Yeah, yeah on the home page yeah. here. And um, like Mary Lou started this one. And if you see a discussion there, you want to reply, you can reply. Um, <laughs> So discussions are sort of uh, a broad uh, message that you want to send out to a group of people. And um, anybody, any individual who's an attendee can start a discussion. So you as exhibitors, as individuals who are part of um, a company that's exhibiting, if you're attending the, co the conference, you can start whatever discussion you want. You can start a discussion about a product or service. You can start a discussion about a giveaway that you're offering at your booth. You can invite people to visit you and, um, you know, pick up a stress ball or, or whatever you might want to do. Um, you can start discussions that are relevant to your segment of the industry, however you want to use that discussion piece. And those will be sent out. We have a weekly wrap-up that's sent out to folks, everybody who's uh, registered and who allows emails to be sent to them will receive a weekly wrap-up of all the discussions 
and uh, direct links to be able to reply to those discussions. So if they're not, even if they're not checking the community on a regular basis, they would still receive an email directly to their inbox to be able to keep up with the discussions that are happening on, um, in the various communities. So the more specific piece, um, a discussion that's sent to an individual as a message. And so um, if you are looking through the attendee list and let's say I want to send Lisa a message, I can just click send a message and it will open up. I won't receive her email address. I won't receive any contact information for her. And, uh, but I will be able to send her basically an email. She will receive an email to her email inbox that um, alerts her that she's received this message and there's a link for her to be able to respond. So it's just an easy way to connect attendees without sharing personal information. Once I've had a discussion with Lisa or if I just uh, feel like Lisa and I really need to chat in person, I can request a meeting with her as well. And um, we'll go through, I, I haven't really gone through, but what you can do when you look at the um, schedule is you can decide which, uh, which sessions, thank you, <laughs> word just word. escaped <laughs> me for a minute. <laughs> which session you would like sessions you would like to attend and if you just click add here at the bottom it'll add it to your personal schedule which will then um, show up here in your schedule and then when you go to request a meeting which I can do actually from here um, if I want to add Mary Lou um, to my meeting then I will add her here and if, if we both, uh, both of our schedules essentially would show up here. And, um, this will be a, a drinks meeting, um, but we, it will, it will offer the, uh, first the available. first available time. It'll propose the first time that you both have available based on your, uh, your, your schedules. You can block off time that you don't want to, show up as available. And then I can request this meeting. I can say I want to meet at booth 400. I can say I want to meet, meet at the registration desk right. in the South Foyer. Meet Outside meet. the Expo Hall. Any yeah. any number of places, anywhere you would like to add um, as the your location. The seventh hole. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, and you can just tell them why you want to meet them, send the invitation. And just like a message, this is sent directly to their email inbox and they have the opportunity to accept the meeting, decline the meeting, or propose a new time for the meeting. Uh, one thing I would add to that is, like Katie said, the meeting request is sent to the recipient's inbox. However, what um, the email that they receive actually prompts them to come back to the community in order to respond to that email. So again, this is another way that we are trying to um, add to a, a conference attendees experience, um, the exhibitors, the sponsors, add to everybody's experience um, and add value to your attendance by letting you communicate and letting you network with other attendees prior to the event. Um, I think specifically what's possible with this online community, um, that that's really the, the biggest advantage and one of the reasons why we went with uh, the specific vendor to to provide the service um, is because it does it extends your conference experience from not just when you're on site but from literally as soon as you as soon as you register you're able to um, start communicating with other attendees really create um, your own personalized schedule for while you're on site to schedule meetings to see what other folks are attending, um, and Katie will get into that in a little bit. But uh, again, it's this way we're not giving out everybody's email addresses prior to the event, which is obviously the most common question that re we receive before an event is, can I get an attendee list with email addresses? Um, we've always held pretty strong on, on not sending out um, everybody's email addresses prior to the conference, so we felt like this was a pretty good um, compromise in order to get all of the attendees connected to each other 
uh, without giving out that full attendee list that you will receive once you get on site. Yeah, and I, you know, this is our attendee list. This is the this is exactly who's going to be there, who's on our list. And rather than just having, you know, um, a PDF with names and company names, you're able to get in touch with them. You're able to um, see their beautiful faces and uh, set up some meetings beforehand. So really, you don't have to wait till the last minute to uh, to make some new connections. So we hope people will will actively use that. Set up your meetings, get ready, uh, and extend the time that you are are participating beyond just on site. So um, I've kind of gone through all the functionality of the individual profile pages. I want to talk about the exhibitor pages. They're very similar to you set them up in a very similar way to the individual profiles. Um, I have uh, sort of this auto remarketing one that I've created just as a sample here. Um, if you are set up as a manager of your page, you can click on exhibitors, you can find your profile, and you will see a button that says manage organization. And if you don't see manage organization, <laughs> that means you're not set up as um, an editor for your page. And I'm happy to add you as an editor. You can talk to the person at your company who is the editor, and they can add you as an editor. Um, however you want to do it, we want people to be engaged. We want exhibitors to be engaged in managing their organization's pages. So if you need to get added to that, uh, just let me know. And I'll give my contact information at the end here if you uh, don't already have it. Or you, you definitely have Mary Lou's contact information, because I know she sent out an email earlier today. Uh, you can let her know, and she can let me know. You guys are all CC'd on that. Oh, OK. <laughs> so yeah, just reply to the email and let me know. Um, I'll just need your uh, your email address, which will be included in your, your company and title. As long as they're included, I'll, I'll get you set up. Um, so this is sort of this is sort of a dummy page. It's it's not um, it's not really filled in. I do want to show you uh, there. We have a few exhibitors who've done a great job. IAA is the sponsor of this mobile community, so they've definitely kind of uh, filled out and maxed out everything you can do. Um, they've added their uh, their logo. They've got a description of what they do. Everybody should have their um, their booth number included, and I'll click on that in a minute. I just want to show you, they've added a ton of links here. So there's plenty of information for people who want more information, whether it's Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, um, various other links. Then we also, they also have a video here. And if you include uh, a link to a YouTube video, as you can see here, it can play right within your profile page. Nobody has to leave. Nobody has to get distracted by that cat video that's one down <laughs> from your video. Um, they can stay within your profile page. And I, um, I haven't really shown you, but this is the Manage organization. If you click that, it's going to walk you through name, logo, description, uh, details is um, where you're going to add your links, uh, documents. If you want to upload PDFs, PowerPoints, anything you want people to be able to download, you can add them there. Um, staff, anybody who's registered for the conference who you want to, um, to be included on your page as a staff member, you can add them. All you have to do is, uh, like, if it'll autofill. So it'll give me choices. I can add Mary Lou as a staff member, which I'm not going to do because she's not. I but think, and also, um, it'll, it'll, where that's pulling from is it's pulling from the attendee list. So um, that's where you would add any of your staff that is registered for that specific conference. Right. They have to be registered um, to be able to show up as staff members because it just adds their profile, a link to their profile to your page. Add admin just means you want to add someone who can um, edit your page. And once you've added people, you can upgrade and downgrade them with a the little button there. Um, let me go back really quickly, return home to their page. And I want to show you the interactive map here. They are in booth 110. If I click on it, it opens up the full Expo Hall map. So I can see where in the expo hall their booth is located compared to everybody else, compared to the food and bar, which I know is important. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
and then I can also click around and see who's next to them and um, who might be, you know, uh, who else I might want to visit and I can kind of make my plan for uh, where I want to go during the conference. I know that this, um, this aspect of a, an interactive map is something that a lot of our exhibitors have been asking for lately. Um, obviously, it's nice to know before you go into the conference who's going to be in the booth around you, who's going to be in the um, booth across from you, all of those kinds of things. So definitely um, spend some time on, where we encourage you to spend some time on the, the platforms, on the, the conference community, um, just kind of looking around as well. Yes, we want you to interact, and yes, we want you to, um, we want you to um, talk to these different attendees, set up meetings, um, participate in all the contests and all of that good stuff. But we also want you to, uh, you know, be able to use it and use it as a, a resource for if you have questions about the conference, um, the agenda, where your booth is, what um, a hotel map for where is the luncheon going to be. Um, you should be able to get a lot of those questions answered here as well. Uh, Deborah, I see that you have a question about which, <laughs> which tab we were on, but obviously uh, I did not see it in time. So if you want to um, just tell me what you're trying to do, then um, I'll be happy to walk, walk back, back through, through yeah. that piece. Um, I'll, I'll call more to keep an eye on the questions box for me. So. Oh, oh, you got it. Awesome. <laughs> I love it when questions answer themselves. Um, okay, so uh, where what? Okay, so you've got your profile set up. It's like I said, fairly straightforward. You manage the organization. You walk through everything. The pieces that I did not click on are these visits and inquiries. And I want to talk a lot about those, actually, because those are really important to you as exhibitors, both now and on site at the conferences. So if you're looking at your um, exhibitor page and you want to view your leads, what you're going to see is visits is going to be anyone who's visited your page, your uh, exhibitor profile page, whether they've, con well, they've just shown up to the page. They've just clicked on your page and they've looked at it. So it's a little creepy because we know who you are <laughs> and we know where you're clicking. We know how many times you've visited. And um, we're able to see more about that individual. You can click directly to their profile. So you can contact them. You do want to be careful because uh, you don't want to say, I saw that you visited my page. I'm stalking you. you. And, but, you if, but if someone shows a genuine interest and seems, you know, seems like someone probably you could help with a service or is a customer, you can maybe touch base with them. It gives you sort of an insight into how well you're doing at driving people uh, to look at that profile page that you have. The other piece is inquiries. And what that is for right now, for when people are using the website prior to the conference, if anyone clicks this request information button on your profile and they ask you for more information about this new product that you're offering, they have the opportunity to share their email address and phone number with you or not. Um, it's their choice. If someone requests information directly, then they will show up in that list of inquiries. Do you want me to just send a quick? Um... Well, we have one. I can show what it what it will look like actually, because um, we did this earlier on the auto remarketing page. We can view the leads, and we have Lisa here, and so she shows up as a lead. When I click her name, because she directly requested information, I can see her email address and I can see her phone number. And I can contact her in whatever way I want to. Um, and I can, <laughs> I can view her profile. And it also shows right here how we got this lead. And um, we haven't covered this yet, but it's a good segue. It says attendee badge scan. And one of the ways that you can add people or you can gather leads using Passable is through the mobile app. You can download that from 
Is it iTunes? Is that what the Apple one is called? <laughs> <laughs> I'm an Android person. You scroll all the way down and down. So at the bottom here, we've got links to uh, for you Apple people and for um, clearly superior Android people. And you can, you can just click there and you'll be able to download the app. It's one app for all four conferences, so even if you're only exhibiting the first part of the week or the second part of the week, you're going to download the same app and you're going to have access to the conferences that you are registered for. Now, once you've downloaded that app, you're on site at a conference, you're standing in the booth, somebody walks up and they say they want more information about your products. Well, all you have to do and it's, it's more complicated to show you without a, uh, a, a phone in front of me, but <laughs> let me, uh, actually, let me go back to where I was. I can show, what I can show you is the mobile version of the website, and it's similar. I can't collect leads from the website, obviously, because I don't have a scanner, but this is basically what it looks like. Um, the colors are really weird on this monitor. Um, so it's going to look something like this when you open up the CPO forum within the app. And yeah, I've got a great phone. It's huge. Um, <laughs> you do have once you um, once you scroll down just underneath. So th this large image here is what it actually looks like on a phone. This is a screenshot from a phone. So underneath all of these buttons here, you will have a button if you are managing or if you're a part of, if you're listed as a staff member on an exhibitor page, you will have the ability to capture leads. So this is why it's important for whoever's managing your page to put anyone who is a staff member for your organization, make them, have them listed as a staff member. Um, on your exhibitor page because then they will automatically through the app be able to capture leads. So you can just click on this capture leads button and then what the, pers the person you are um, you're scanning will open up why is this not showing? Huh? <clears throat> it, it may just be because it is Maybe breaking things. I, I apparently am breaking things. I just looked at this. Um, there's, there will be, I'll show you right um, here. <laughs> oh, it's not there. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm making this, I am making this so much harder than it Sorry, has to be. Um, let me refresh this. Uh, one of, what it's supposed to do and what it did when I just, um, just tested it before the conference is that it will have a button here that says display QR code and it will enable the person who wants to check in to display, there it is, uh, display their personal QR code. So they will show you their QR code. You click on uh, the leads piece here, okay. capture leads. They show you your, their QR code. You scan it. And they'll automatically show up as one of your leads. And that looks like this. So Lisa shows up as a lead here. And as I showed you um, on your profile page, then you are able to, why can't I find what I'm looking for? Um, you will be able to see that you have, you have that lead. I have to go back a little bit. So it's also nice because um, this is going to help you as an exhibitor keep all of your leads um, from this specific conference in one place. Um, obviously, we know you guys are traveling a lot, especially in the industry for various conferences. You're exhibiting in a bunch of different places. Um, and I, I know with myself personally, I'll, I'll have a bunch of business cards or notes or whatever from from different events, and I'm like, ah, where did I see that person? Where did I meet that person? Well, now you're going to have all of your leads from Youth Car Week uh, housed in, in one specific place, and that's going to be on your exhibitor um, your exhibitor page. So, uh, we're you know, hopefully it'll it not only make it easier for you guys to capture leads, but it'll make it easier for you guys to see which leads you captured on site 
during Youth Car Week so that you can really get that. I mean, in in all honesty, you can you can get a good idea of your ROI. Um, we know you guys are you know spending a lot of money to come out there and network and represent your company, and we want to support you with that as, and give you as many tools as we can uh, to make sure that it's successful for you. Um, our event is only going to be as successful for us as it is for you guys, so we want to make sure that you have all of the tools, you have access to all of the tools that you possibly can to, to make it um, a big win for your company. So just to walk through those steps one more time for capturing leads so that um, it's a little more clear cut. You, as the exhibitor or the person in an expo booth, you need to have the app on your phone. When you log in, if you are a staff member of that exhibitor, you will be able to see this right here, this recent leads. Just scroll down and you'll see it. Uh, you'll click Capture Leads. The person you are, the attendee you want to scan will display their personal QR code. You just scan it like you do a QR code. It'll give you a confirmation that says it was scanned and it'll automatically add it to your leads list. So it's really way more straightforward than I made it sound. Um, it's just a little hard to show because I don't have a phone um, that, I can, that I can walk you through it with. Plus but Katie's a writer, so she's pretty wordy. I'm, <laughs> yes, I am wordy <laughs> in general. Just kidding, Katie. Hey. Um, okay, so we've got a question. Hang on just a second. Let me open it up so I can actually see it. Um, Jeff? Yeah, so the, uh, the scan function is done on your smartphone using the app. So you open up the app and um, it will you, ask you, um, would you like to allow your, uh, allow the camera, I forget exactly what it says, but you know, it's that the generic um, allow. You got to have your camera access. Your camera. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it, it just uses your, your it's through the app, you click capture leads, it'll open up, it'll it'll ask for permission and it'll open up the camera, or the QR code scanner. Mine made me download a QR code scanner separately because oh, I didn't have one downloaded. Oh. So it may, um, oh, yeah, it may work it. differently. Um, <laughs> but uh, it'll, it kind of walks you through the process. And um, the QR code we do not have on the attendee's badges. The attendee, um, the attendee will have the app Hopefully, we're encouraging people to download the app, um, and that will generate their personal QR code. And so then, um, I think there's just too much room for error to put them printed right. on the name badges because mm -hmm. I can see that. Right. Anybody who registered on site, we wouldn't have a QR code for. And um, any if we were able to make a mistake in an email address or something, it would. Um, it would it would mess everything up. Yeah. So they they open their app, you open their your app, and you scan their code um, on their phone. So you, I think you you've got it. And just to show you, this is kind of I mean this is the mobile version, but they would just click here, um, and they would click display personal QR code. That's exactly how it looks in the app. This is their personal QR code that's tied to all of their personal information, and you would. Um, just scan that with your phone. And they would show up in your leads list and you would be able to contact them via email, via, via telephone, however you, uh, however you want to do it. So all of that being said, I want to let you know that we, uh, of course you want to, you want to generate as many leads as you can. I recognize that's part of part of what you're there to do, but we also want to encourage you to generate those leads through Passable. So we are offer we're running a little uh, a little test, a little uh, a little competition, that's the word I'm thinking of. And um, the the exhibitor who generates the most inquiries, not visits to their page necessarily, but actual inquiries um, by the end of the conference will uh, receive from us a $250 gift card. So we want to incentivize you to do that. We will uh, that's make the cash I was talking about. Yeah, that's email. cold hard cash, mm -hmm. but you know, mm -hmm. in a plastic form. Um, <laughs> we, we do want uh, we want to respect the fact that some of you are only there for two days. Two days. Some of you are there for the full week. Um, so we will. Uh, I think the plan is to base it on a 
uh, divide by the number of days you're there, and uh, so people who are there for the full week don't necessarily have an unfair advantage. But we hope you go go and, and, and get as many leads as you can. We're, we're starting a push with our attendees uh, now to encourage them to download the app. We've had some decent um, traction with people adopting and using the community itself, uh, creating their profiles and things. So the next step is to make sure they're aware of and have downloaded the app so that then they can show you their personal <laughs> QR code on the app and um, you can generate leads that way. So that's one of the things we're doing uh, in, the, in the coming days as we get down to the wire before the conference. I were officially 17 days, 13 hours, 18 minutes, and 32 seconds away from the start of Huge Park. <laughs> in your <wondering>. Thanks. <laughs> um, so uh, one, huh? oh, sorry, I thought. <laughs> <laughs> the peanut gallery here. Is <laughs> um, so obviously you guys know how to market your company, um, and so we don't want to tell you what to do, but uh, we want to offer some ideas as to how you can, just some thought starters um, for how you can get people to uh, visit your page, make inquiries, and how you can kind of market yourself using Passable. And uh, one of those things I mentioned a couple of times, you can share your exhibitor profile um, through social media. You can share your personal profile through social media. Let people know that you are going to be on site and that you want them to come visit your booth. Um, Share yeah, exhibitor profile plus hours of networking. <laughs> so once you're, if you're on the manage uh, your profile page, your exhibitor profile page, it offers you the opportunity to share that profile just like it does on your personal profile. So it's a good idea to share those and encourage people to check you out um, both before the conference on Passable and on site um, at your booth. Um, we, Moore has actually done a great job of creating for many of you um, some graphics that you were encouraging you to use on social media. This is an example, Montway, Deborah at Montway has done a great job of marketing their booth and their participation in the conferences. Um, we either have or can create these, uh, these images for you to use on social media, customized with your logo, your booth number, and the dates that you're going to be at the conferences. Um, it's also uh, customized by which social media platform they're using. So the images, we, we do have them sized um, to, I think this might be an Instagram one um, specifically. So uh, we do have them uh, for Instagram, Twitter, um, Facebook, and LinkedIn. LinkedIn. So uh, you can, as I think Deborah has done here, uh, you know, tag people that you want to know that you're going to be at the conference. And if you want to drive people to your um, your expo profile, your exhibitor profile, you can add a link to that as well, um, so that people will come check out what you have to offer maybe come download some of your documents, watch your videos, check out whatever else you have going on there. So that is, um, that's another idea. One, um, one of the, the things that you should be aware of if you're on Twitter, um, hashtag used car week is really important. Um, if you want to show up, we're going to have screens throughout the conference that are going to be displaying um, people who are tweeting about the conference. So before, during, and after the conference, if you use hashtag Youth Car Week, your tweets are going to be pulled up and they're going to be shown throughout the, the conference uh, space. So uh, that's sort of a little extra marketing for you. Show some great images of what's going on at the conference, advertise your booth, anything you want to do through Twitter, um, and we'll pull it up. And, and we'll Instagram and Facebook and I think Google Plus. We're using Postana, so it pulls from a variety of social networks. So you do not have to change what medium or channel is your favorite to use. You can continue to market through the channels that work best for you, and we will pull from those channels as long as you use hashtag UseCarWeek. Um, and like Katie mentioned, we will also be pulling photos. So. Um, I encourage you to take photos of some of the people who are stopping by your booth or 
kind of incentivize people Um, and then we will put them up on our social media screens, and they're really, really cool. Yeah, we're gonna have um, we're gonna have a couple of different uh, displays on site for all of those tweets um, and uh, posts and everything that everyone's gonna be posting. Again, uh, the filter is using that hashtag Use Car Week. Um, Adessa is our social media sponsor this year, so we are going to have. Uh, the large screens in the general session room. Uh, we're also going to have uh, a couple of monitors and, and screens throughout the conference space. Um, and then also within the, uh, the app, it's going to also pull a lot of the conversations um, into the app, into that home page. Um, I would note that uh, you know these when we're talking about having them in the general session room, these are tweets and things that are going to be displayed on what like a 14 foot screen um, in the front of the room. Um, and there's a there's two different. We're going to have a text visual visualization. That's the hardest time with that <laughs> word. Um, and we're going to have one for photos. Um, but again, if like myself personally, I have my personal Twitter account up there, and I think it was. Last year in Canada, on the first morning I woke up and I think I tweeted, I'm going to make today my bitch. Um, <laughs> and it was down in the expo hall when I came down for breakfast. So well, we will have moderation. You might on. want to make sure that you're tweeting <laughs> yeah. something you want everybody to yeah. see. We will be moderating, so it's not that if you use the hashtag, it's automatically going to go in. Um, and we are going to do everything <laughs> we can. Um, that's how we get sponsors. <laughs> um, but just a really great way for you, and kind of like Katie mentioned, um, just let people know that you're participating in this. Um, just by you sharing that you are going to be at one of the conferences at Use Car Week, or if you're going to be there for the whole week, um, other people who, you know, whether they are or are not attending the conference are going to notice that and they're going to wonder why you're exhibiting, what do you have to offer and showcase. So beyond just telling people that you're going to be at the conference, this is an opportunity for you to just get more marketing value um, and that name association. Awesome. So that kind of covers, gives you a few ideas um, about things that you can do ahead of time, a few things that can be done um, on site or, or will carry over on site. Um, I want to quickly mention a couple of other um, on site opportunities. I mentioned briefly the idea of offering a giveaway, requiring people to come check into your booth using the mobile app and uh, that will enter them into a giveaway. Any number of um, ways that you can encourage people to, um, to get to your booth and to, to check in, um, that's obviously going to increase the number of um, inquiries that you, that you have and get you closer to winning our contest. Um, and all the cash. And all the cash. Um, one one thing that we uh, we can offer on a limited basis, and it would be um, it, there would be a cost associated with it. So you would need to go through your sales rep, or you can let me know, and, and we can contact you, you with the right people. We can offer um, text messages on site uh, if you want to get everyone who's a part of the community and who has opted in to receive text messages. If you want to send them a text message and or a push notification through the app. Um, that uh, they can, um, you know, come to your booth now and uh, for a demonstration or however you want to use that. If you want to communicate with people who are on site via text message, that is something we can offer, but um, w there is a cost associated with it. Everything else is uh, included with your sponsorship, but that's sort of a, a bonus piece that we can offer an on site marketing uh, text message. Um, there are a couple of other things that we're doing that are not directly related to uh, generating leads for our exhibitors, but just sort of enhancing the exhibitor experience. And um, I'm going to let more talk a little bit about, we're going to do some exhibitor roundtables, which you'll find out more about, and we're going to be uh, offering some video or, or taking some video. So I'm going to let more talk a little bit about those two things that she's kind of yeah. directly responsible. So we realized that um, inevitably every conference or trade show, the exhibitors have some downtime. 
And so we are putting together some very quick 15-minute um, roundtables about four exhibitors coming from different aspects of the industry so that, you know, it's not like we have all of the marketing exhibitors talking with one another. We want to give you different perspectives of um, what other people in the industry are doing. Um, so I'll be sending you some invitations. You do not have to attend these roundtables. You can assign someone else from your team to, to attend them. Um, I think it would be really beneficial for you because we're also going to capture some of that conversation on video and then use that as marketing um, so that you can have one of your representatives um, in this video. Which leads me to the next thing is um, we are going to amp up or ramp up more of our video. Um, this will be very simple GoPro, um, iPhone, smartphone type stuff, very quick um, just to kind of get you to talk about your company, what you're doing, and then your experience at Used Car Week. Um, probably some random phone questions as well. Um, and then we'll also be just capturing the overall uh, feel of the conference. So just if there are cameras around or if Mary Lou is looking really suspicious, it's probably because she's trying to hide her GoPro uh, to know that she has it. Um, and, and then the, the idea is that hopefully we will be able to get these up onto our Instagram fairly quickly, some 15 second videos. Um, and that will be happening throughout the week. And then afterwards, um, we will be uploading the videos and they'll live on our, our site. And then, of course, um, you will be able to use those videos um, if you want to for your own marketing. So just be aware. Um, really, we're just encouraging you to be as chatty as possible. Um, you know, part, part of this is uh, creating the noise and making sure that you're the loudest. So um, we encourage you to engage on social media, to engage in person, to encourage the people who are stopping at your booth to check in um, so that you can then follow up with them after the conference. And I, you know, I think of this, um, I do want to add here that this is just another way that we want to increase the value to our exhibitors, um, specifically the exhibitors. Uh, for your investment in the conference, um, the investment in your time, and making sure that it's a really, a really successful event for you. Um, we recognize that there is no such thing as a perfect event. We recognize that you know every 45 minutes you guys have downtime, um, and then 15 minutes during the breaks where all of the exhibitors are in the expo hall, and then another 45 minutes of where you're just kind of sitting there twiddling your thumbs. So this is how we're trying to, this is all part of your exhibitor package. This is all part of what we're trying to do to help support you guys really have a successful um, experience on site as an exhibitor. So all of these roundtable discussions that we're talking about, um, the contest, those kinds of things, we're not going to be coming up to you while you're trying to do a product demo with the client. This is going to be during that downtime when there's just a handful of folks in the expo hall, so so hopefully we're. What I'm trying to say is we're not going to we're not going to intrude on your time. Uh, we understand that that your time is, is precious when you've got those um, all of the attendees in the expo hall. Um, so if there are, if there are other ideas that you guys have that you want to bring to the table, or if there are specific things that you've seen at other conferences, um, specific, specific things that you've thought of during when you've exhibited at Used Car Week in the past, and you're like, man, I really wish I could bleh, insert whatever. Um, maybe not whatever, but uh, <laughs> just let us know. Um, you can message us. Yeah, you can passable. message us through Passable. Um, you have all of our email addresses. Yeah. You can tweet at us if you would like. Um, really, all every what we're trying to really do is just increase the conversation um, amongst exhibitors, attendees, increase the number of connections that you guys are able to make and that you have access to, and, and we're trying to lead by example. Yeah. So um, hopefully we're doing a good job. Yeah. And I see somebody, um, I see Deborah, you asked if we are going to be utilizing Periscope. Um, we will not be using Periscope this year to, to do a live stream, maybe potentially in a 
next year or something of that nature. Um, one really cool thing is that we are also going to have some like actual professional video production happening for a couple of our sessions. Um, and so that will be another cool thing for you um, once those are done. You can say, hey, we were there. This is a really great topic. This falls in line with you know, what our company does. And um, so you'll have access to that as a post-conference. Um, post but if you want to Periscope live from your expo booth, you should definitely do that. Um, you know, we're not going to stop you from, from doing that. I think that you sharing your experience at Used Car Week means a lot more than Used Car Week telling everybody how great this event is. Because it's awesome. It is really <laughs> awesome. Um, and right. we have a really great group of exhibitors and sponsors and speakers. Um, and this is sort of like the one time of the year that this giant industry really comes together in all different, you know, um, sectors of it. So take this opportunity to um, figure out what else can you do to get your company to that next milestone. Absolutely. So um, I think that kind of uh, that that covers the passable portion of things. Um, if you have questions specific to your expo booth to uh, errata or any of the, the show details. Yeah, just to, actually, I'm just going to run okay. over this really yeah. quickly, Katie. Sorry, I know we're coming up on an hour pretty um, pretty quick. But everybody should have re received their exhibitor service kit from errata. Um, it is a digital kit, so you do need a password in order to access your personal um, kit. If you have not received that from Arata, please let us know right away so that we can get you guys um, connected with Arata. It does have to come from Arata because they are our expo show house and um, it is a password protected site because you're able to order all of your, um, any furniture that you need, any uh, tables, chairs, any of those things, you're ordering those directly on the site so then you're putting in your credit card information so that's why we don't have um, access to that. Um, we do have all of the, the exhibitor service kit does include shipping information for shipping your booth to the warehouse in advance or shipping direct to the show. Um, we will not be accepting um, any packages at the hotel other than the ones that we have tracking numbers for. So please make sure if you're an exhibitor and you're, sh you're sending directly to the show site, directly to um, the Phoenician, that you use the label that is given in your exhibitor service kit. Uh, we cannot be responsible for any uh, other exhibitor booth materials. Um, we have, I think, something like 300 boxes already being sent to us. So. Um, we just definitely need you to use the errata mailing information for any of your expo materials. Um, the exhibitor service kit also has our setup and strike times. Um, we do swap out exhibitors on Wednesday morning. Um, so some folks will be exhibiting Monday, Tuesday, some Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then some folks Monday through Friday. So that Wednesday morning is when we're going to be um, swapping out new exhibitors for the second part of the week. All of the setup and strike times are also on the show schedule. And then it also has the show hours for when the expo hall is going to be open. Um, uh, for example, with the CPO, uh, Katie, can you click on the full schedule? Sure. Um, we start with registration at 8 a.m. Um, it will show on the agenda here that registration is in the south foyer, um, the 9 o'clock workshops are in their designated workshop rooms. And then that first networking break at 945, that is also in the south foyer. Exhibitors are not required to be done setting up until 3 o'clock. So the first time that we're going to be in the expo hall on Monday is for our 345 break. Um, and that is also right before we go into general session. So all of the attendees will be there. Um, obviously, we'll have lots of food and sodas for everybody. And then they go into their general session at 4. And then that opening night um, reception uh, is going to be at 5 o'clock. So make sure on the agendas you pay close attention to the networking times um, and which room they're in. Anytime you see something Phoenician, EFG, and East Foyer, that means it is going to be in the expo hall. Um, Monday morning and Wednesday morning are the only times that will be listed in the South Foyer. 
Um, for quick reference to all of those times, you can actually scroll back up to the top of the agenda page um, for the specific day. And then you can, on the left-hand side, um, if you actually, oh, or you could just do it that way. There you go. Okay. I was going to say uh, do by track and networking. Mm -hmm. Um, anything networking is going to be for um, the exhibitors. So you can see those are going to be our expo hall hours on Monday. And these are going to be our expo hall hours on Tuesday. So folks, if you can just let your staff know, um, anybody that's going to be manning the booth, those are going to be their exhibitor hours. And then again, it is those 45, the 45 minutes between those breaks is when we're going to be doing the um, exhibitor networking. Or you might be meeting with a new client because you set up a meeting. Yeah. <laughs> or you might be doing a product demo in your booth because you set up a meeting, but then they're not going to the really super educational um, conference session. <laughs> okay. I might want to. <laughs> okay, so just a couple more things. Uh, we have recorded this webinar. We will be sending it out to everyone uh, shortly so that you can share it with anyone you'd like to share it with. I feel like anyone who's attending on behalf of your organization should definitely take a look and get a feel for how to set up their profile, how to manage the profile, and how to uh, collect leads for you on site. I had a question there, um, Katie. Or was that yeah, that was one? the one I just oh, answered. Okay. Sorry. Uh, that's okay. Um, so yes, we are recording. Um, just this may be obvious, but uh, this is obviously the CPO site. There are separate sites with separate agendas, separate um, attendee lists for each of the conferences. If you want to to visit them directly, you can go to. Uh, CPO2015.passable.com, you see that there. Uh, if you just replace the CPO with subprime RE3 NRC, that's going to get you directly to these pages. If you need um, help remembering your login or uh, if you want to be invited again, if you're um, an attendee, I can set you up. Uh, you, sh you should have um, a profile set up so I can send you a direct link. If you're not attending the conference but you want to be able to manage your page, just let me know and I can set you up what's called an assistant profile. You won't show up in the attendee list, but you will be able to manage either other people's profiles or and schedules and et cetera or, uh, and or um, manage your exhibitor page. So uh, feel free to send me an email. I want to make sure everybody knows how to log in and knows how to access uh, these pages. So. I am your contact for that. Uh, if you have any questions for us, uh, feel free to um, just shoot us an email. We want you to make the most of your expo booth uh, digitally, virtually, and on site. So um, we will do whatever we can to help you out. Uh, I know we are surpassing an hour here, so I'm going to wrap things up and uh, just say thank you for attending the webinar, and uh, we will be in touch with a recording shortly. I uh, hope you have a good Thursday, and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks see for you joining in, us. See you in Scottsdale. Bye. <laughs> Bye.